I have to start this video <clears throat> right now because I'm gonna be crying my, and I'm not gonna be able to see enough to read my notes. I have literally have notes. Bea, stay here, come here, wait. Um, something miraculous happened last night. So I don't know if this is gonna be long enough for me to share this on YouTube, but it should be. Yesterday, <clears throat> I have a deck. You guys have heard the message before where it says, um, something that you thought dead and over suddenly burst back to life. What you think cannot be, will be. What you think um, cannot be attained, will be attained. Um, okay, yesterday, my girlfriend Lisa came over and <clears throat> we gave, oh my God, Chip just ran in front of me. Look, the chipmunk. Chip says something wonderful is gonna happen today. He ran in front of me yesterday on the way to the gong meditation. I was so upset about Willow because she was struggling. Willow's my cat, my senior cat. She's had kidney issues. Um, that's what the vet says. But I'm wondering if it's a missed, I mean, I don't know, she's extremely thin. Um, but she eats and she drinks, she doesn't throw up, and she washes herself, cleans herself, which they don't do normally when they're dying, right? But she's super, super skinny and she's had these seizures, massive seizures. So my girlfriend Lisa has um, subcutaneous fluids because she has a 16 year old cat. Willow's only like 11, maybe 12, we think. I rescued her and I don't know what kind of a life she had before. Her owner died and she was in the kennel for, for weeks and weeks and weeks until they put her on special because no one was asking to see her. So I, my cat Lily died violently in my arms and she came to me that night and I wasn't gonna go look for another cat. And she came to me and she told me to go, look there, go there. She's waiting and I went and this Willow looks exactly like Lily and she wouldn't respond to me. She was shut down. Oh God, I know that this is a mirror of my twin. I know that this is. She was shut down. She wouldn't respond. She wouldn't look at me. And I said to her, look, I, I, I can't take you if you don't want to come with me. You have to make this decision. So I'm going to let you look around. So um, I went to look at um, Sammy, my beautiful, beautiful Sammy, who passed about a month ago. And he was completely shut down, like wouldn't even lift his head, was terrified. He'd been used as a bait cat. It was horrible what happened to him. And I said, I'm taking him. And they said, you know, he's on death row. He's just going to be put down. And I said, no, if nobody claims him, I'm taking him. So then I went back into Willow and they called her Pandy because um, she looks like a panda bear. And my, my landlord, Pat, was with me and he was really attached to Lily. He was the one who carried her in. Oh, he buried her body. And uh, I'm just gonna stop here and let Bea go around. So he said, you have to take her. She looks just like Lily, you have to take her. And I said, I can't take her if she doesn't respond. And so we brought in another cat to see if we could get her to respond. And I said, Willow, you're gonna have to, and I had already started calling her Willow. I said, you're gonna have to let me know that you wanna come with me. I can't just take you. And, and she wouldn't, so I went to turn to leave and she meowed and turned her head and I was like, oh my God. And so he goes, you have to take her. And we brought in another cat because I didn't know how she would, Liger was gonna do. Liger doesn't let any cat in the house, right? After Lily, he, he was really good with Lily, which was shocking. And I just thought, I just need to see that she's not gonna fight with him. And another cat came in, she wasn't, didn't re react in any way, so I brought her home. So anyway, I've had her for almost three years. I think three years. Um, yeah, because it's coming up December. I think it'll be three years. And so the number three is really important. I don't want that to be the year, the time she goes, because Spirit said number three is a very important number for me. I know that it is. Ascended Master's working with me and full circle completion and there's everything about the number three. It's a very highly spiritual number. God, I'm out of breath. Not from this hike. I'm just, just my overwhelmed. So Willa was going down. She had a seizure when we were at the cabin and it scared the shit out of me. And I, and, and I didn't want to do to her what I had, you know, made Lily stay alive for me, basically. I'd had a dream and they showed me that an animal had ripped her body away and all that was left was her head. And basically she was telling me, I'm gone, my body's gone. All that's here is my mind. So I said, I can't do this to Willow. I'm not gonna keep her alive for me because she had stopped eating, she'd stopped drinking. She was just a zombie and I was giving her fluids, force feeding her, it was, I was horrible. It was for me, not for her. So 
I said, I'm going to put her down. <clears throat> but she, I kept getting messages all day. The vet couldn't come until 5 that afternoon. He was going to come to the house. And I kept getting messages. No, no, don't. No, it's not time. And so I asked Willow. I said, you know, if, if you want to stay, you're going to have to come to me and stretch. Like, I want her to do something specific. And if you, if you want to go with Liger and with Sammy. Uh, actually, I think she'd had her seizure before Sammy had passed. I said, then you can just stay in the little house because a lot of times she'll ignore me in her little house. She turned, she came out and she stretched and I said, I called the vet and I said, I'm not doing it. And she was good for like two months and she had another seizure and I was, oh God, but this one, it was shorter, but it took her longer to come out of it. And then a few nights ago, I don't know, three or four nights ago, she had a massive seizure. It was huge and like twice as long. And I, I had her every time, what I found was interesting is she knew when she was gonna have a seizure, she would come to me and she would t wake me up and then it would happen and I would hold her. And then after this time, she was just out of it. I picked her up and I held her. She normally doesn't like to be held and I held her close to me and I was rocking her. And the whole time she was having the seizure, I was giving her Reiki, calling in Archangel Zadkael, calling in Saint Germain for the violet flame, calling in Archangel Raphael and all the Reiki masters and my mother and anybody else who would come forward. I called them all in. I was working with her and she came around finally and she and what's so interesting is after she has a seizure she's starving and she eats everything. So she ate and she drank lots of water and then she went to sleep. And my friend Lisa said we we're having the sound healing gong and I love gong meditations. I just love them. I want a gong of my own so bad. The resonance for me is huge. Oh look make a wish. I want her to stay. I wish that she stays and that this has really truly been a miracle. That's my wish. And it's going up to heaven. Look at it keep going up instead of coming down. So, um, I thought about it and I thought my, my energy affects her, right? And I needed to calm down because every time she would have, like after the seizure, I would feel this extreme anxiety. And it wasn't mine. I knew it was hers. And sometimes I felt like I was connecting to my twin because he has anxiety. Um, or somebody in his family does anxiety and depression. They suffer with this and I feel it. I, I mean, I feel it with, with whoever I'm around. And so I thought, I don't want to affect Lily or Willow in a negative way. So I, I thought I'm going to go and I was gone two hours and it was the most powerful, powerful, powerful. And it was interesting because I've rare, I've never invoked, invoked the violet flame. I never have. I don't know. I just hadn't been shown to do that, even though I've known of it. And St. Germain and Archangel Zagheel, they're the ones in charge of the violet flame. But this time, Spirit said, invoke the violet flame. And I was walking my path. I'm going to go up to the next shady spot. I was walking my path. And I got a message. And the message was, what, what do you wish? And I said, I wish that you would heal her. I wish for a miracle. Because I had just gotten that card that said, you know, something that you thought dead and over suddenly burst back to life. And I said, what do, you, what do I want? I want her to be okay. I want her to, I want you to throw her into remission, whatever this is. She can be put into remission. You can do that. I want her to stay. And if you can't do that or don't want to do that, or she doesn't choose to stay, which is a big part, if she doesn't choose to stay, then I want you to allow her to go to sleep peacefully in her sleep. So while I was at, and while I was walking, I heard invoke the violet flame. And I said, I'm calling on all of you, Archangel Zadkael, Archangel Jeremiah, Archangel, oh, that's interesting, Jeremiah, he works with purple light too. He's the one for, for renewal. He's the angel of renewal and new beginnings. He's the angel that we work with during Mercury retrograde. The angel of review and new beginnings. So I didn't ask for him, but I'm asking for him now because he just did something. So, and I think of... Um, my past life, I, I was in, in the house of Bestet, and my twin was connected to Anubis, which is, if you look at Bea, she is the Anubis dog. She's the golden jackal. She is the dog that sat at the throne next to Pharaoh, the, the God, the, and the God that is in charge of lost souls, the ones who weighs the hearts, right? Same as Archangel Michael. It's their version of Archangel Michael, I guess, Anubis. So to me, it's just a symbol of Archangel Michael, right? But anyway, call on them. St. Germain, Archangel Zadkael, Archangel Raphael and his green healing light. And I called my mother, all low-flying angels. 
as I walked this trail and I picked up a stone, a perfect round stone, vortex stone. This is where I find them along this path. And uh, I went to the sound healing and my friend Tina showed up and Lisa was there and Justin, Lisa's boyfriend, he presided over it. God, he's amazing. And they began and he started to speak and he started to call in. Like he was saying, imagine taking this deep, every time we breathe in, we're all gonna breathe in deeply. And as we exhale, imagine all of this. And he said, emerald green healing light. Right as I was in my head calling in Archangel Raphael's green healing light and, and Archangel Zadkael and Saint Germain in the purple ray, right? As, right as I was saying that, he said those words. And uh, imagine now that emerald healing light and that and I was hearing in my head in the purple ray and what's interesting is there were lights up above on the ceiling because this place is taking place I mean this this ceremony was taking place in the Cava Bar Lacuna Cava Bar in Sedona and they have lights for at night right and the lights turn from blue to purple to green and so I guess as I had closed my eyes I had seen the purple light last I don't know if it was just going up like that above mine and I, and I didn't I was just connecting to it it might have been that but I had just said the purple flame and I saw the purple flame and so as he was saying breathe in and breathe out and now as we breathe out imagine all of that healing light going exactly to wherever your body needs for it to go and filling and healing every cell bringing it back to its ultimate state of perfection because we are we are healing machines. We are able to heal ourselves. Imagine, and I was saying this unconditional love, and I was saying, I believe, and he was, Lisa started to sing, and she, some of the words were, I believe you are love, I am love, and I was saying, I believe in angels. I believe in miracles. I do, I've seen them. I've helped, helped the angels turn a car all the way around and land on the tires. I've, I, I've, I was involved in that, I myself, my hand slipped on the wheel and I drove across four lanes of oncoming traffic in, in Temecula, California. And all the cars drove through me and all, I saw the people's faces and I, I was just in a state of shock. And natural reaction was to get back on the right side of the road and I yanked the wheel and went back across four lanes of traffic and they went through me again. I saw their faces like, what is happening? And when I got on the other side of the road, I said to myself, that did not happen. That did not happen and I didn't talk about it for seven years until somebody asked me, have you ever experienced uh, angelic di inter dry divine intervention? And I said, yes, I have. But I, my mind couldn't, I couldn't wrap my brain around the concept that that had happened. And so I was laying there saying, I believe, I believe in miracles. I've seen miracles. I am a miracle. I'm a living miracle. And we all are actually miracles. But the fact that I lived through that, right? So I was saying all of these words. And look at these, what people call weeds. These bright yellow flowers, like little rays of sunshine. Aren't they beautiful? Look at them. People cut them down. They think they're weeds. They're so beautiful. They're like little sunflowers. So um, I'm, I'm doing this. This session was, was intense. It was so intense. I recorded it and I shared it on my, on my, it's on my YouTube channel. I shared it with everybody. And I know the sound, you won't get the sound the way it was when you were there in person. So I would highly recommend that if anybody can get to Sedona or if you're in the area, go to the Lacuna Bar, Lacuna Cava in Upper Sedona once on the weekend and once during the week my friend Lisa is doing this and her, that is her gift I told her when I first heard her that was her calling she has the she when she sings it's it's not it most of it isn't words it's just angelic sound and I have a song that I wrote called music the voice of angels and that's what she's got it was it's angelic transmissions coming through her it's incredible so after that I came home and b before I went she she invited me and I said no I can't I've got a sick cat but thank you for asking me and she said I could come over later I have subcutaneous fluids I could give her and I had just said god I wish I could get her to the vet but it's the weekend it always happens on the weekend because I would give her fluids because she's so dehydrated and when they're dehydrated they don't want to eat they feel nauseous they feel horrible right and she had started going under the bed not sleeping with me which is what a cat does when it's shutting down right so she came over yesterday afternoon and Willow had 
after the session, it was amazing. After I had done the healing session, I came home. She was mad at me. She was on the, on the bed saying, where were you? Like I'd left her when she was sleeping. I had checked on her several times, but she hadn't woken up since she had been up with me at four. And I had done a, a big Reiki healing session on her then. And she had gone. Now, and one of the things I ask is that she goes into a deep sleep because she needs that for recovery, right? So she'd been asleep and hadn't woken up. And I checked on her and I left about 9.30, quarter, no, about quarter to 10. And I was gone two hours. So when I got back, she was upset. And I said, I'm sorry, but I went somewhere and I did something that's gonna really help you. And I said, are you hungry? And I gave her some food and she freaking chowed twice. She doesn't, she normally eats like a teaspoon. She chowed down like two tablespoons and then again, two tablespoons of food. Chowed it all down, drank a ton of water. And then she went back into her little house, which I had, I had worn this crystal, if you guys have seen it. Lisa and Justin made this for me. And it's made of angelite, amethyst, and citrine, and clear quartz powered crystals. I think the crystal, actually the quartz, not, it's a different kind of quartz crystal. It's a highly powered one. And I've, I've obviously invoked healing into it, but I sat there, laid there actually in that meditation and I, all of the energy and everything that I was feeling and that was pulling in and calling upon, I asked to go into these crystals. And so I hung it right on top of the little bed that she was lying in, like right in the opening. I took the stone that I found on the trail. This is a vortex. This is a sacred vortex filled with vortex stones that hold the energy of the ancestors and hold the energy, the powerful energy of the vortexes. And I put that in the bed next to her in the corner, one corner. And then my girlfriend, Barbara, had given me a crystal, a beautiful quartz clear crystal, beautiful clear. And I had charged that with healing and I put that in the opposite corner facing her. And so she was fine. She was very relaxed. I took a picture. She was lying on the quartz crystal facing the Sedona stone. There's one right there, right? And, and she had these crystals above her pointing right down at her. And so I did a reading with a regular client of mine. I was probably half an hour and I kept checking on her. And then I started to do um, like shuffle my cards, get my cards ready, get everything ready. And I started getting messages from her. I need treat, I think I may need treatment. I could sure use your special touch right about now. I need you, I want your attention. And so I turned off my work line and I went to her and I turned on my copy. I, had, I was downloading it onto YouTube, but I turned on my copy of the meditation. There's another. Um, on my cell phone and I, I started to play it. And as Lisa was singing and as Justin was calling and invoking, I was calling and invoking. And as I was calling and invoking St. Germain and the Violet Flame and Archangel Raphael's healing light, I saw and I called the angels, all the angels. I said, all low flying angels, mom, any, any of the angelic team or any of the, of the Lyran, the Lyrans who want to help. And I saw the energy moving down through this point, right? The angelic coming from this, because this is celestine, celestite, that's what it is, celestite. Is that what I said? I probably called it angelite. It's celestite. And it's to reach the highest celestial beings, right? So I was pulling and seeing the energy moving down from that point, dropping down onto her crown. And I was massaging her neck and her face under her chin the whole time. And it was long, it's 45 minutes. That's how long Reiki sessions I generally do with her and with anyone, but with her, I've been doubling it almost. So as I was doing this, probably halfway through, she, her eyes, like she was fighting it. Her eyes were closing, but she was fighting it, trying to stay present. Maybe she was literally trying to hear what I was saying. But finally, she closed her eyes and she started making these little mewing sounds that she has never, ever made in my presence. And her eyes were closed and she was in the flow and it was incredible. It was incredible. I know I'm repeating myself for stuff that I had written in when I shared the other video, but a lot of people don't read what I write in the, in the comments of the videos that I share. So, um... It went on for 45 minutes and then Bea made a noise and it caught her attention. So she kind of looked up and when she did that, she, she was back. Like she, she came back, she was you know back in the land of the living and she 
kind of looked around and I said, do you want something to eat? And she ate the biggest bowl of food that she has ever eaten, drank twice, and then settled back down. And then Lisa came and we did, we waited until she woke up. Um, and we did the, um, we gave her the subcutaneous fluids and she was really, really good. She didn't even cry when the needle went in. She, we gave her like half an inch if you, on the bag. And this time I want to give her more. We gave her a little over half and she took it all. And right towards the end, she was like, okay, I'm ready. So we took it out and she went to sleep. And when she got up last night, she was hungry. And I mean, hungry and drinking and everything was great. And then in the middle of the night, she came to me and asked me for Reiki. And it was the longest session. She came and stood on my chest. And everybody says, you know, my cat, they come to us when, when they're gonna say goodbye. But they also come to you when they need healing. And she comes to me when she needs Reiki or when she knows she's gonna have a seizure. So she came and she stood on my chest and I was concerned because I thought, okay, she hasn't come on my, that close on my chest for such a long time. And I'm saying words that are, that are directly to my twin and he hears what I'm saying. And uh, it happened and so I just kept massaging her and, and, and talking to her and telling her, I believe in you, I believe in you, I love you. You are so loved. I believe in miracles. I believe in angels. They're helping you. They're healing you. They're sending you this angelic high vibrational frequency of angelic healing, loving light because you deserve it. You deserve a healthy, loving life. You deserve to be loved. I love you. You are love. On and on and on and went. And it was so long and it had, and we did it twice in the night. It was so long. Her eyes were closed. She was, you know, I think she was asleep and I, I stopped talking, but I was saying it still in my head. It was like, I don't know, God knows what time it was by then, like 4.35 in the morning. No, it was, yeah, probably. And so I kept going and then my hand stopped moving because I was so tired. And suddenly her head fell on the bed, boom. And I, and I, I sat up and, I, and I, I looked at her and she wasn't moving. Her head was just on the bed and her tail stopped moving. And I put my hand on her body and there was no breathing. And I, I said, oh my God, Willow, I thought you were getting better. I thought you were getting better. But I, but I asked for you to go peacefully in your sleep. And she was just gone. And and suddenly I thought to myself, oh my gosh, it's Labor Day. The vet's not open. What am I going to do with her body? And I was petting her body. And, and I sat up and I, I kissed her forehead. And when I kissed her forehead, she lifted her head. And, and, and she looked around at me and she was like, what just happened? And I was like, what just happened? I said, I thought you were gone. Oh my God. And I know with Liger, when he passed, he, he went... And that he, they take a final breath afterwards. And I didn't know if that was going to happen. But she was looking around, looking around. And then she sat up. She kind of pulled away from my hand. And, and, and she was disoriented like I was. You know, I mean, it was, I don't know how many seconds. It was quite a while that there was no movement. And I'm telling you, I kissed her forehead. And that's when she lifted her head. I felt like freaking the prince in Cinderella. And, uh... So I said, do you want something to eat? And I had her bowl of, um, I'm just gonna sit here in the ground. I gotta get grounded. Um, I had her bowl out next to me and, and in the middle of the night, I'd given her her shredded chicken and it's very brothy. She likes the broth. She doesn't like really to have to chew anything. And it's very important that they have a lot of fluid because their, you know, their kidneys aren't getting enough fluid. They're not able to flush their, their kidneys out they're not functioning properly. So normally she won't touch it. And so I said, I, I got the food and I kind of pulled it together in the center and there was like maybe a, a bite full, you know, like a, like a, maybe like a full teaspoonful, but it was kind of, it was all dried chicken. And I thought I'm gonna just jump off. I said, just hold on. And I was gonna go get the broth and, and pour it on top and see if I could get her to have some. And she bit into it like I've never seen her. She bit it, she bit it, she ate all of it. I got the broth. And the other package, I put the whole thing in the ditch. She ate the whole thing, the whole thing. And I was like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. And, and I, then she, she came up to my chest again. She didn't want it. She didn't want anything to drink. 
I oh, no, she did. She didn't at first, and then she went to get something to drink, and then she came over and laid against my hip, which she hasn't done for months. She used to always do that, and she laid down again, and she's just looking at me, and I'm like, I don't even know what just happened. I said, I told you, I was saying to you the whole time, I believe in angels, I believe in miracles, I believe that you are a miracle, and I don't know what I was saying, but I was like, the whole time, right? <sighs> so this morning, um, and then she got up again went to sleep got up again ate again drank again and then she went down and she she talked to me she's like wow and I'm just like okay I don't know what's going on so I was telling Lisa I said something just happened it's a miracle I said we need to give her this water again if you could come over and as I was talking to her I was explaining to her what happened and this song began to play I said I feel as though I don't know what happened it's like she she went and decided I don't want to leave it's like she was halfway there you know, when somebody has a near-death experience. I have a friend who died on the table and he was gone five minutes. It could have been that long. It was, it was a long time. And maybe not five minutes, but maybe like two minutes. And he said he had a discussion and he decided he wanted to come back. And suddenly he was back. And so this is the song that started to play. I was crying as I was telling Lisa. And this began to play in the background. I never thought that I'd find my way out. I never thought I'd hear my heart beat so loud. I can't believe there's something left in my chest anymore. But goddamn, you've got me in love again. Show me that heaven's right here. Show me that heaven's right here. Oh, you showed me that heaven's right here. Touch me so I know I'm not crazy. Never have I met anyone like you, somebody like you. I'm not afraid anymore. And that, and I was like, oh my God, Lisa, you should hear the words that are playing in the song. And then this song began. You know me better than I do. I can't seem to keep nothing from you. How do you touch my soul from the outside? I want to love me like you love me. I've never ever been loved by anybody like you do. And I'm just like, I swear to God, they say love heals. I don't know how long she's here, but she's here. <sighs> And I did get that message, what you thought was dead and over, suddenly burst back to life. And I am telling you things that happened emotionally between my twin soul and I, and things that actually physically happened between my twin soul and I. And so I don't know if she's a mirror of him, and maybe she's been a mirror of him all along. I don't know what happened in, in Willow's life before she came to me. All I know is she was shut down. And I've, and, and I've had, I had Liger and I had Sammy and then I had the babies and I had Bea and maybe she didn't feel that she was important. And it's like my twin, I've got all of these people that I work with, right? I give so much of my time and love and energy to my, to my people that I work with. It's my path, right? But that doesn't mean that my twin isn't first in my heart. He always is. But maybe he doesn't know that. And maybe she didn't know that. Maybe she didn't realize. And I, because she wanted my attention, she kept saying, I want your attention. I want your attention. And Bea is the same. We all want attention. We all want to be acknowledged. We all want to be loved, right? But this was a miracle. And I know that there are miracles because I lived through what should have been death more than once. So I wanted to share this all with you. And for those of you who have any doubts, I mean, maybe we need, maybe we need proof. I said to Spirit, show me that you're here. I said them, show me that you're doing this in my behalf. And right then, a California scrub. California scrub says, you know it's going to happen. You know it's gonna, you're going to get there, but it's been delayed. Delayed gratification. Unusual family units, like this family unit. I've got a bunch of children, and they're all animals, right? But that's my family. Delayed gratification. You know it's going to happen. So when Spirit says, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, and you don't see signs of it, Show me a miracle. I said, because I was talking about my twin. Prove to me. Show me a miracle. It's n I don't see any signs of it. It doesn't mean things aren't happening, but I see no sign of it. Show me that you're here. Prove to me. And I kept saying, I don't even know why I'm doing this Reiki if it's not affecting her. Let me know. Let me f And I could feel it moving through my body. I said, I want her to feel it. Prove to me. Show me that what I'm doing is worthy. It's doing something. That it matters. Holy shit. It matters. So don't give up on anyone or anything or yourself or spirit.